Good day, students. We are on module number three, and for this week, we are going to have a new topic. Last week, we discussed about the different laws of motion. So for two weeks, we had those three laws of motion. For this week, we will have this one. All right, so we have to discuss potential and kinetic energy. So may I request everyone to please get a copy of your module, also get a pen and a paper or your notebook, and if you have your calculator, also get it. So let's begin. All right, so you are shown with different photographs, and what I want you to do is to identify which of the following pictures show kinetic energy and also which ones show potential energy. Okay, so just put your answers on your brains or on your mind, and later on, as we discuss, you will know if your answers are correct or incorrect. Let's proceed. Energy is oftentimes defined as the ability or capacity to do work. So for this module, we will be discussing about kinetic energy and potential energy. So please listen carefully as I discuss so you will be able to answer your module correctly. So let's begin with this, kinetic energy. Okay, as you can sh uh, as you can see, there is a diagram of a man with an arrow, and the arrow has been released. Now, kinetic energy is also known as energy in motion. It comes from the word kineticos, which means moving. So, associate kinetic with movement. Next. In this diagram, there is a ball and an empty bottle. So the plastic or a rubber ball, when pushed, will heat an empty plastic bottle, and that ball possesses kinetic energy. The force applied causes the ball to accelerate from rest to a certain velocity. Take note of the word velocity because later on we will be dealing with that as well. Now, there is a formula for finding the kinetic energy. We are going to use the formula Ke equals one-half mv squared, or we could rewrite it and we can say Ke or kinetic energy equals mv squared divided by 2. m here is the mass, and the unit for mass is in kilograms or kg. v is the velocity, which has a unit meter per second. Now, the unit for kinetic energy is kilogram meter squared per second squared or newton meter. You write, is, write it as nm or joules or simply big letter J. So here is a list of formula and units that you can use as you solve problems related to kinetic energy. So if the unknown is kinetic energy or Ke, you use the formula that I have mentioned a while ago. However, if the unknown is mask, you are going to use a different formula. This time, m equals 2Ke divided by v squared. Since we are looking for the mass, the unit that we should be getting at the end should be in kilograms. Now, when you would like to get for the velocity, the formula that you are going to use is square root of 2Ke divided by m. And at the end, you should be getting the unit meter per second. Let's try solving this problem. A 1,000 kilogram car has a velocity of 17 meters per second. What is the car's kinetic energy? So when you are given such problem, all you have to do is to first identify the given. So, ano ano yung mga nakikita natin given? We have here 1,000 kilogram and that is our mass. Then, we also have here 17 meters per second. What is 17 meters per second? That is referring to the velocity. That is why we have to write it here. And what is required? The problem is asking for the kinetic energy. Therefore, the formula that you are going to use is Ke equals one half mv squared. All right. Then the next thing that you will do is to substitute the values into the formula. 
So the solution is here. Ke equals one half. Substitute m, which is one thousand kilograms, times seventeen meter per second. That is the velocity, and then you square the value of velocity. Okay. So you have with you your calculator. You should be getting at the end one hundred forty-four thousand. 500 kilogram meter squared per second squared or you can use the unit newton meter or you can use joules so whichever you would like uh, to use as the final unit as long as it is energy that could be accepted so i hope you get it if you have further questions you may ask me later on Okay, next, this is potential energy. So when we say potential energy, this is the energy of an object that is because of its condition or position. Okay, so look into this diagram. So we have here ball A and ball B. What do you notice? Yes, ball A is higher as compared to ball B. So, is there a relationship with the position of the object with regards to its potential energy? The answer is yes. And what is that? Okay. The higher the object, the more potential energy it has. Always remember that one. So, since A is higher than ball B, we can say that ball A has more potential energy than ball b okay yes i hope you understood that one so let's have another one okay uh potential energy has several forms and the first one is gravitational potential energy or we could write it as gpe gpe is the potential power gravity can have on the object due to its position or simply gravity this energy depends on the mass and height of the object. Next, there are factors affecting gravitational potential energy or GPE. First one is the mass of the object. Please remember this. The more mass an object has, the more gravitational potential energy it will have. Or we can also say as mass decreases, potential energy decreases. Ibig sabihin, kapag mas mabigat ang isang bagay, meron itong mas mataas na gravitational potential energy. At kapag mas magaan naman, meron din itong mas mababang gravitational potential energy or simply potential energy. Another factor that affects GPE is the height of the object from the ground. The higher the object from the ground, the more gravitational potential energy it has. So, ayan, more height equals more potential energy. So, given that they have the same mass, which is 10 kilograms, one is 5 meters above the ground and the other one is 3 meters above the ground. Which one has greater potential energy? What do you think? Yes, the one which is 5 meters above the ground. And what is the reason? Because the object is higher. That's it. So remember those two factors, mass and the height of an object. Let's proceed. Okay, so let's see if you understood the lesson. So I have here a diagram of a boy, and as you can see, there are several points showing the potential energy. We have points A, B, and C. So let's analyze. Which letter shows that the boy has the maximum potential energy or yung highest potential energy? Think about it. Okay, let's see. What is your answer? I hope you got it correctly. The correct answer is at point A. Point A has the highest potential energy or the maximum potential energy. And what is the reason? The reason is because it is the highest position. Pinakamataas ay nasa point A. Hence, it has the greatest potential energy. 
On the other hand, which letter shows that the boy has the least potential energy? You should be getting the correct answer. The correct answer is letter B. And the reason, because it is in letter B where the boy is lowest the ground or pinakamalapit sa ground, pinakamababang position na yan. Okay, so I hope, I hope you got it. Let's go to the next one. The second form of potential energy is elastic potential energy. It is the energy stored as a result of applying a force to deform an elastic object. So think about elastic objects. The best example is rubber band, and it is also the most common example. Rubber band, rubber band another is spring. So let's look into consideration yung spring muna. A spring in its normal state has no elastic potential energy. However, if the spring is a stretch, it has elastic potential energy. Because as we have mentioned here, it is a result of applying force to deform an elastic object. And when the spring is compressed, we can say that it has elastic potential energy. Similarly, this idea is applied to a rubber band. Okay, so the next time you see a spring of your notebook or a rubber band, think about elastic potential energy. Next one. Let's continue. So there is also a formula if we would like to get for the potential energy or PE. This time, the formula that we are going to use is PE equals MGH. Now, what is M? That is still the mass, and the unit is in kilograms. G, on the other hand, is acceleration due to gravity, and it is a constant value. Ibig sabihin, you will not be solving for this because it is already constant or it is already given. And the value for G is 9.8 meter per second squared. And we also have here H, which refers to height, and the unit is in meters or m. Now, what is the unit for potential energy? Similar with kinetic energy, we are also using Newton meter or joules. Okay, so we also have here different formula that you can use. So if you are solving for potential energy, you use P equals mgh. However, if you are asked to solve for the mass, then you are going to use the formula PE divided by G. What is G once again? Correct. G is acceleration due to gravity. And what is the value of G? 9.8 meter per second squared. Alright, so if you are asked for the mask at the end, you should be getting kilograms as your unit. Now, for height, you can use the formula H equals PE divided by mg, and you should be getting the unit m. Ayan. So, you may take a screenshot of this, and or you may copy it on your notebook. Okay, so let's try to solve this problem. This problem is also found in your module. So, listen very carefully and try to follow. A man lifted, sorry for the error, a man lifted the 1 kilogram box to a 0 0.5 meter table. What is the potential energy of the box? So, what's the first step? You have to list the given. So, tignan natin yung problem. We can see here 1.0 kilogram and what is that? Correct. That is the mass. So, ilagay mo na. M equals 1.0 kilograms. Next, 0 0.5 M. What is that 0 0.5 M? If you see meters here, then that is referring to the height. So, you have to write here H equals 0 0.5 meters. And, what is another given? Wala siya dito sa word problem. However, since it is a constant value, we, you should all, always be writing that one. And that is G, or acceleration due to gravity, which has a value 9.8 meter per second squared. Next, required. What is the unknown? The unknown is potential energy. And the formula that we are going to use is MGH. So let's see what are the next steps. The next thing that you have to do is to substitute the given values into the formula. 
So the formula that we are going to use is PE equals MGH. So first we have to substitute the value for M. And the value for M is 1.0 kilograms. Next, substitute the value for G, which is 9.8 meter per second squared. This is a constant value. And finally, we have H, which has a value 0 0.5 meter. The next, the operation that you will use is multiplication. So, imo multiply mo lang si 1.0 times 9.8 times 0 0.5. If you have your calculator, you could easily solve for this. You should be getting 4.9 and then combine the units, kilogram, meter squared. Bakit siya naging meter squared here? Because as you can see, meron tayong dalawang meters here. Meter and another meter on this side. And sa baba, we have S squared. All right? Alternatively, you can rewrite this as 4.9 newton meters because that is another unit. And pwede mo rin siyang rewrite as 4.9 joules. So either of these ways, you can use kilogram meter squared per second squared, newton meter, or joules. Accepted naman yun. At this point, let's get to know more about potential energy and kinetic energy by looking into different diagrams. So, the first diagram here, the man on the left, yan. so the arrow has not been released yet, therefore it has potential energy. Now, once the arrow has been released or is released, the potential energy changes into kinetic energy. Oh, kasi nga dito, hindi pa siya gumagalaw. So, but it has potential energy or stored energy. Now, once it is released, when the arrow moves, it becomes potential, or sorry, kinetic energy. Okay, next up. Okay, so the girl holding a ball on a certain position, yan, hawak niya lang yung bola. The ball has potential energy. However, once the ball is dropped by the girl, the potential energy changes into kinetic energy. Okay, I think the diagram is very simple to understand. Next, another one. So you remember this one. Potential energy is always attributed to mass and position or simply mass and height. Kaya nga, the formula is PE equals MGH, mass and position or the height. However, for kinetic energy, this is associated with mass and speed. And the formula is KE equals MV squared divided by 2. Next. Okay, so this part is also found in your module. I think this is a Activity number one, and that is found on page 11. So I will be helping you with the answers. Okay, so this graph shows a ball rolling from points A to point G. Now, tignan natin. Which do you think is the point where it has the highest or the greatest potential energy? Isip, isip. Potential energy is related to position. Therefore, the higher the object is, the higher its potential energy. So, tignan dito. Saan ba siya pinakamataas? So, it's the highest at point A. Therefore, point A has the highest potential energy. And nasan yung lowest potential energy? Of course, dun sa pinakamababang position, which is point B. Now, what about the highest kinetic energy. What do you think is the answer? The correct answer is point D. So parang isipin mo lang magkabaliktad yung kinetic energy at saka yung potential energy. So since A, dun sa pinakamataas na position, it has the greatest potential energy. And sa pinakamababang position, it has the lowest potential energy. However, when we talk about kinetic energy, baliktad. If it is at the lowest position here, it has the greatest kinetic energy. And kapag nasa pinakamataas na position naman siya, which is A, it has the lowest 
kinetic energy. Since we are done with module number three, I would like to give you some reminders here. These are the things that you have to accomplish. And the submission date for your answers to module number three is on November 5, 2020. Please submit on time. And I think this is it. With this, I would like to say thank you for listening and for watching. I hope you learned something. Till next week, goodbye. God bless you all.